Hello everyone and welcome to Medicated Housewife DIY where crafting and mental health come together. My name is Sarah. In today's DIY video, Dollar Tree DIY Tumbling Tower Block Phone Stand Three Ways. We are making three different versions of this super easy two-piece phone stand that fits together unbelievably quick. We're using tumbling tower blocks, that's the Dollar Tree Django blocks. It's so simple and oh so functional, you don't want to miss this one. I think you're going to like them, so stick around and let's go make some stuff and jump right into this. To begin with, I'm using Dollar Tree Tumbling Tower Blocks. Each of my phone stands is going to use 46 blocks, so I did use two boxes of the 72 block box to make the three phone stands. I used Tight Bond Quick and Thick Wood Glue. I will link that for you in the description box below, but you could easily use the Dollar Tree Super Wood Glue as well. I'm also going to use two of the Dollar Tree Small Wood Cubes per phone holder and a couple of pieces of a wooden craft stick. I'm going to start out by gluing rows of six blocks that are glued together side to side, as you can see me do here. As I said before, each phone holder is made of two pieces, and I am going to be using a total of seven of these six row block sets to complete each of these holders. But what I'm actually showing you is how I originally started to make these phone holders and shortly after I started I did realize that I was going to need to change up the configuration in one of the two pieces. But for now here's what I'm showing you is the original. I'm gluing together three rows of six, then a single block and an additional row of six after that. So I will end up with two identical pieces of three rows of six with a single block on its side and one more row of six. So with my two identical sides in front of me, I want to bulk up that little rectangular cutout piece on one of those two sides. So to do this, I am simply taking a wooden craft stick and using a scissors to cut it in half lengthwise and then in thirds. I am going to glue three of these small pieces of that craft stick to the top of the rectangular cutout just on one of those phone stand sides, just one of them. I will do that three times though, one for each of my three phone stands. I know that sounds confusing, but it is really simple when you're watching me do it. After I glued the first two stands, I decided to use these pre-stained blocks that I had lying around so that they wouldn't go to waste. I did the same thing to those. I made my rows of six blocks and then glued three of those together, added a single block, and followed that up with another row of six blocks. This left me with two identical sides. I did the same thing to the pre-stained sides using pieces of craft stick to bulk up that rectangular cutout area by gluing three of those little tiny wood pieces of craft stick into that area. And I did that on only one of these two identical pre-stained sides. Now here is where I had that aha moment and I realized that all three of my phone stands had to be modified in order to work the way I wanted them to. And I showed you all the stuff leading up to this Anyway, because I wanted to be real with you guys and to show you the mistakes and the do-overs as well as when things do work smoothly, I think it's only fair for you to see it all. But as a wise person once said to me, life is all about plan B, so changing up our one piece of our two-piece set for each of the three phone holders. I take one side and basically rip off the last row of six blocks and instead I'm going to replace that with another two individual blocks that are glued end to end and then glued to the single block. And I will say that I did this to the side that is without those tiny pieces of craft stick that I used to bulk up that rectangular cutout area. So on the opposite side of those with the craft stick pieces. Are you still with me? I hope you are. <laughs> That's where you're going to put your two new single blocks. 
And obviously I had to go and do that exact same thing to the two other phone holders that I had already glued together. And I'm just ripping that final row off on one of them and replacing it with the two single blocks glued end to end. So after fixing all three of the two piece phone holders, our next step is that I took two of the Dollar Tree small wood cubes and on the shorter side of the phone holder, you're going to line up the cubes on either side of the last row of blocks. And I leave the cubes ever so slightly just overlapped off the edge of that last row. It's just like a smidge overlapped as you can see me doing here and I'm going to do that two more times on the other two phone holders as well. Once all my glued pieces are dry it's time to paint and on the first phone stand and that's the pre-stained one I wanted it a darker color so using my folk art antique wax mixed with some plain water just to thin that out I painted both sides of this phone stand on all sides of it including the edges and the back and on the cubes as well as those tiny pieces of craft stick that I glued in there too and once that dried I did go over the entire thing a second time because I wanted the color to deepen a bit. When the antique wax had dried I grabbed my apple barrel acrylic paint in the color khaki and I'll link that for you below and I used a rough dry brush to sparingly brush some of that beigey color over the darker brown because I wanted a distressed look. So I paid close attention to the edges of the blocks and lightly brushed over the middle of the blocks too, just to give the whole thing an aged look. Now, just so you understand the concept of this two piece phone stand, it's two pieces, obviously, and they fit together kind of like a puzzle at the two cutout points on each side like you see here and once they are together you have this elevated base that fits both a small and larger phone and also has room in the middle for your charging cord to hang down plus using the cubes there instead of additional blocks to hold up the bottom of the phone leaves your microphone on the bottom of your phone uncovered so that people can still hear you which is great <laughs> when you talk to them so you really cover all the bases when using this phone stand. I had wanted to try some painter's tape art on one of the phone stands. So using this thin painter's tape, which I will link for you below, I made a random pattern on both the front and the back of both sides of the phone stand. And I picked out four colors that made me think of fall, but you could customize your color scheme to your liking. I used Apple Barrel Peach, Apple Barrel Barn Red, Folk Art Chalk Paint in the color Castle, and Folk Art Chalk Paint in Sheepskin, all of which will be linked in the description box below. Then I started painting the untaped spaces in the four colors in no particular order, just trying my best to not have the same color right next to one another. And I painted both sides of both of the pieces of the phone stand. Then let that first coat dry and I went over the whole thing a second time with a second coat of color. Once the paint dried, I carefully pulled off all the tape, which is oh so satisfying to do. And it leaves me with the exposed lines as the natural wood color. I then grabbed my Deco Art Triple Thick Gloss, and I will link that for you below, and gave the entire piece one full coat to seal it and to give it a little bit of a glossy finish. On the final phone stand, I decided to give it a subtle white wash effect. So using a mixture of plain water and Waverly White chalk paint, which I will link for you below, I went over all the exposed areas of both sides of the phone stand using a dry paper towel to wipe off the excess paint so that I could keep some of that wood grain showing through the white. And I put that aside to dry. I felt the white wash needed some embellishments, so I grabbed this piece of nautical rope from Dollar Tree and used some hot glue to attach it to the edge of both sides of the phone stand. I was careful to avoid putting the rope over those rectangular cutout areas where my two sides fit together, otherwise they won't fit together anymore, so avoid those areas. 
I also had some twine from my stash. So I made some really simple twine circles using hot glue and ended up gluing those to the front of my phone stand since they coordinated really nicely with the nautical rope. And this is how my three tumbling tower block phone stands turned out. I do want to say that even if the styles I chose for these phone stands aren't for you, the basic function of this phone stand, in my opinion, stands alone. I like the fact that it's in two pieces that can be stored relatively flat when not in use. Also, the fact that you can charge it with space in the middle for a charging cord while using it is a real added plus. I also really appreciate the fact that the microphone, at least in an iPhone, I'm not positive about other smartphones, but on an iPhone, this won't block the microphone. So people can hear you when you're using the stand to FaceTime or something like that. That's a really big plus for me. My favorite, I think, is the whitewash with the nautical rope, but again, this design is so versatile, you could make this fit virtually into any type of style or color, the sky's the limit. But as usual, I want to know what you think. Let me know in the comments if you think this tumbling tower block phone stand design is a winner. And also let me know in the comments what direction design-wise you would go with this. I'd love to know your ideas. I hope you enjoyed this medicated housewife DIY and if you did, please consider hitting the like button and subscribing. It really helps out my channel. Once again, I really appreciate you watching and a very big thank you to my subscribers. I am so thankful for all of you. Until next time, I'm the medicated housewife and crafting is my medication.